Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and share the link with whoever you have in your network. Uh, I, today I did not uh, make uh, afternoon because we just have our internet. We have a very bad storm and we believe it or not we have a snow. You believe it? I mean it's April. <laughs> <laughs> the half of April. Anyway, so we lost the internet, and thank God it's back. Uh, the topic today is, you know, what the purpose of uh, religions, whatever they are. I mean, there is many. But, you know, our topic is always is about Christianity or Islam. So what is the purpose of Islam as religion? What, uh, what Islam will do for us. You know, if we look around us in this earth and see what happened to this earth since Islam came to existence, if there is any improvement, if there is, uh, is things better, uh, is Muslims in Muslim countries are happy? Uh, did Islam provide something better for mankind? So we will discuss this, and we will discuss it deep, not just like a silly talk. Uh, talk is very cheap. You know, if you go to, like I was searching in Islamic website to see which website will give me an answer for what is the purpose of Islam. All of them, they give you silly, stupid answers, have nothing to do with the question. You know, there's God, you worship God. Um, what is that, I mean? That's it. There is a God. We worship God. So God, he created us just to worship him. Actually, that's what the Muslims believe. The purpose of Islam is just to make Allah happy. All of you are a bunch of toys for Allah. The Quran says, not me. That Allah, he created the human and genie, which is a funny creature we never saw. Uh, Allah, he created them both for one reason, just to worship him. That is the whole purpose of Islam. And I find it very funny and very silly. The whole purpose of a religion is just to worship a person, his name is Allah. Hmm. So why, what, what all this drama for? I mean, okay, you know, create us and put us in a farm like chickens and sit in a chair and say, we are, I am God and you are my chickens. Hmm. Are you happy? And you see, the purpose of a belief is to help a human being to be better human, to live better, to accomplish better, to be useful for his kind. In Islam, no. The purpose of Islam is just to worship a God, his name is Allah. And here, if you read this verse carefully, Allah, He wants you to worship Him. A return, Allah in heaven, He will give you a couch for your ass. And He will give you unlimited food. But in heaven, not on earth. In earth, you are screwed. In earth, you have to walk like a donkey to afford to get a piece of a bread. But in heaven, you know, Allah will give you a lot. Mm. Muhammad God never spoke to Muhammad, never appeared to Muhammad, never did anything to Muhammad. So how we can trust even those promises? Let us say somebody promised me, I will give you tomorrow, I will give you. But this guy, Muhammad, he never have any proof of his God existence. So, if you are a dreamer who dream about heaven 
have a river of wine and I don't understand why I will have a river of wine I mean what is the point of a river of wine what about we have a bottle of your wine a day uh, two of them uh, ten what I would do with the river is that just to exaggerate and to fool me a river of wine a river of milk a river of honey what I would do with river of honey it's enough for me to to have little tiny honey once a day what river of honey what I would do with it so I find that Islam did not do something better for mankind Islam is just a funny promises for people who they are dreaming about a fantasy sexual fantasy women who their asses is one mile size what does this have to do with God and heaven and how in the world that ass will make my life better in heaven and how that ass will make my heaven heaven hey, by the way guys we have uh, there is the, the gentleman who his name revelation 2213 uh, the Muslims they flag his channel and they took it down for him so subscribe to his name please uh, he have he posts his my videos there all right and always back up create more than one channel not only one channel because they will try to take you down never give up it's okay you post it again what a big deal so subscribe to his channel revelation post your name revelation say something in the text yeah revelation 22 13 you see his name anyway so what is the what is this what this Islam is about I mean I here we go I I open the news I see Muslims killing Muslims in Libya Syria Egypt Morocco Algeria Mali Nigeria Afghanistan Pakistan Kashmir Russia and I'm talking Muslims about, about Muslim killing Muslims but I'm not talking about Muslims now fighting with others just Muslims killing Muslims Iraq Syria Turkey I mean what what Islam did to those countries Saudi Arabia Mecca is one of the most dangerous cities in the world and the people of Mecca they are addicted to drugs as you will never believe so what Islam did to us same time if we do a little examination of the cult of Islam just to show you that Islam not only does not fit does not do better it make it worth The Muslim they say to us <clears throat> that in Islam if you steal we cut your hand first of all Islam teach you how to steal Islam does not forbid you from stealing Islam only forbid you from stealing from someone is protected if he is not protected you can steal there's a video on YouTube by a guy his name is Abu Qutada he said if you see a, a Christian in the street capture him capture him and take him to the market and sell him he's like a cow and he said yeah this is a stealing he said in the video by the way he said this is stealing but he said but this is stealing from uh, uh, an unprotected person unprotected person so the Muslim believe that stealing is forbidden but you know it, it from certain people which is the Muslims or those who pay the jizya like a Christian who pay the penalty to for protection they call them the people of the Zumma. Uh, uh, so certain people are protected. But what about the rest? No, we steal from them. We kill them. We take their money. We take their women. So Islam did not forbid stealing. Islam teach you how to steal and from who, which which means Islam have a manual guide of we steal from who. By the way, if there is an Abdul, when I call me, I want to prove me wrong. Uh, just to let Muslims have their opinions be said in, the, in our, our program I can go to Paltok and let me know and you can text me there and I will take your call from Paltok <coughs> not in uh, Skype no more 
Read with me this hadith and let us see how, how silly this hadith is. The Prophet said that if somebody uh, what is the hadith translation? I mean look I put the hadith the hadith is gone. What? I mean you see Muslims when you translate they are the most silly people. What is the translation? The hadith is narrated in the authority of Ammash etc. What is the hadith? <laughs> I wanted to read the hadith for you but there's no hadith. They told us who said the hadith. I mean, have you ever heard of a translation like this? They said to us, who is the one who said the hadith? But there's no hadith. Welcome to the world of Abdul. Special intelligence. So how I'm going to read the hadith now? The hadith here in Arabic. In English, they say to us, who said the hadith? Let us try to find it in a different place. All right. <clears throat> yeah, maybe here. Okay. This is the same hadith, by the way, in Sahih Muslim or Sahih Bukhari, but and now we find a translation the prophet said may Allah curse the thief who steals an egg which is which his hand is cut off or to steal a rob which his hand is to be cut off okay hold on so if a person who steal an egg we cut his hand Muhammad, he attack his neighbors, he steal their women, he steal their money, he steal their sheep, and they did not attack him. He is not a thief. But if a Muslim, he steal from a Muslim, Muhammad will cut his hand. And what is the theft? Stealing an egg. Hold on. A person who steal an egg, he is not a criminal. He is a hungry man. Is that right, guys? What he would do with the egg? Why in the world you want to cut a hand of a human being because he stole an egg? Is that going to fix the problem? Okay, now the man, he stole an egg, we cut his hand. So what will happen to him now? He was not able to find food when he had two hands. And now, what will happen to him after we cut one of his hands? Yeah, it's in front of you, for one egg. For one egg or a rope, even a piece of rope, you steal it, he will cut your hand. Again, the Muslims can steal it from non-Muslims, unless you are a Muslim who is under protection, which means you pay money for protection, like the Mafia. Like, you know... The, the, actually, the Mafia, they learned that from, from the Islamic occupation for Europe. So, if you steal an egg, we cut your hand. What is justice? Is that justice really? What is mercy? Uh, uh, Fahim is saying this, uh, this is the punishment needed. First of all, this is the punishment of the Arab, not the punishment of Muhammad. Muhammad is just copying what the Arab do. Blindly. He's taking their bad habit. This is not justice. This is not, this is not, not only not justice, this is evil. Because now you are destroying society and the, the thief still will, will steal. And then now in Saudi Arabia, people, they steal. Here we go, you cut hands. Still they steal, they rape, they kill. I mean, this is the land of crimes. So your harsh punishment did not make any difference. And now a person who is a stealing egg, obviously he is a poor man. What about we say, okay, the, the guy who steal, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, a cow. <laughs> An egg? It's not even a chicken. You did not even take the chicken. 
the one who arrived to the, the to the egg, he can take the chicken, but he took the, he, he took only the egg. This is telling you that the guy is a very poor man. So what we do? We cut his hand. That is stupid. So uh, there is a story actually. Let me show you. Let me find you this story to show you the stupidity of Islam. And I'm not insulting, by the way, when I say stupidity, but you know, you know me. I say things as it is. Let me show you the hadith. <clears throat> All right. This is a story about a guy supposedly who steal, and this is a Sahih story. So they cannot say, you know, we reject and the garbage they say always to us. So this is a story supposedly. A person who stole. A thief was brought to the prophet. He said, kill him. Here you notice something very wrong and very stupid about the Prophet of Islam. Anyone notice what is the problem? Anyone notice? What is stupid about this conversation from the first line? From the first line. Kill him? Okay. Aren't you the one who said to them, if somebody stole, we cut his hand? So what you are saying in him? Here, Muhammad playing as God. He is Allah. You see, he's showing you his power. Kill him. As if he's a chicken. Like, kill him. But the Muslims here, they want to show you that how, how much Muhammad, he knew the future. But the Quran says, Muhammad, he know nothing of the future. That's a contradiction for the Quran. But let us see what will happen. The people said, he has committed theft, which means only like, why you want to kill him. So the Messenger of Allah said, okay, cut off his hand. So his right hand was cut off. He was brought at the second time. And he said, which means he stole again. And he said, kill him. The people said, he has committed a theft, which means we cannot kill him. Aren't you the one who told us only we cut his hand? Or, by the way, not only cut his hand. Uh, the Quran says you cut his hand or you, you cut his uh, uh, limb from opposite directions. So he said, okay. Then cut off his foot. Look at this mad madness. You stole it. The guy, he stole it twice. So now he have no hands. He have no foot. Okay, now let us say, let us say, this guy will never steal again. So what we did? Is that going to help us to be better human being? Is that is that going to fix the humanity? Is that going to show the mercy of Allah? Now we have a person, maybe have a family, maybe have a children, and now he have no foot, and his right hand is gone. So his left foot, his right hand. Hmm. How nice. So his left foot was cut off. They are talking about cutting, cutting, cutting uh, parts of a human being as if they are cutting like nothing. You know, it's like a chicken. Then he brought for the third time. Third time? The guy he stole for the third time. You believe it or not? Well, now actually, I believe that he should steal because he cannot do any work no more. <laughs> I mean, this is the time to steal. You know what I'm saying, guys? If we cut the hand of the foot and the foot for a man, what he can do now? 
The only job he can do is steal. If he can walk around. Muhammad, he said, kill him. Muhammad insisting he want to kill him from the beginning. The prophet, the, the, the people, they said he committed a theft. The messenger of Allah said, okay, well, cut off his left hand. So the guy now, he have two hands gone and one foot, his left foot. How merciful. So now we have a guy, he have no hands. He have one foot. Beautiful. This is this is justice. Then the guy he they cut off his hand. So now he have no two the two hands is gone and one foot. Then they brought him for the fourth time. For the fourth time. I mean, just to show you how we stupid the story. The guy he have no hands no more. How he can steal? I mean, do you see, have you ever seen a stupidity farther than this? He don't have hands. We cut off his two hands and we cut off his foot. So how he stole by the one foot he have, how he can move around? How this person even can see anything? The story continue. The prophet said, kill him. The, mess the people said, he has committed a theft. So Messenger of Allah said, okay, cut off his foot. So his right foot is cut off. And he was brought for the fifth time. Like what in the heck? The guy now, he have no hands, he have no feet, he stole for the fifth time. Muslims, I never saw people, they fabricate lies, can beat Islam. Nobody can beat Muslims in line. The guy now, he have no hands, he have no feet, and he stole for the fifth time. I want any Abdul to explain to me how he did it. Is that James Bond story? What is this? The, the man, he have no hands, he have no feet, and he stole for the fifth time. And then we dragged him and cast him into a wheel and throw stones over him. Look how nice, how merciful those people. So the poor guy now, he have no hands, he have no feet, and he was accused of stealing. But here we notice something very stupid, if this story is true. Let us, let us, uh, you know, the most time they say is true, so let us, let us make it a true. Anyone notice how stupid this story is? Additional to that, there's, how, there's no way the guy he can, you know, steal. The, the, shouldn't Muhammad he should ask? Muhammad is a smart man, right? Shouldn't Muhammad ask how this guy stole for the fifth time? <laughs> I mean, Muhammad is the judge, huh? And he is the one who decides what to do. Okay, they brought for you a guy, he have no hands, he have no feet. And they say to you, he did the stealing again. Shouldn't you ask how he did it? Do we have any Abdul? Any Abdul and explain to us the stupidity here? I mean, who is the stupid here? The one who report the story, the one who made the story, the one who fabricate the story, or the one who is the judge, his name is Muhammad. What do you say? Somebody saying why religious people they love to touch children. That's very stupid of you to say. Because uh, sexual fantasy is a sickness exists for mankind since ever. Many kings they used to have sex with the children.
have nothing to do with religion. If a person he have a mental illness, sickness, this is a, a children, sex with the children is a sickness. Well, they have nothing to do with religion. But there is some, they can justify it in religion. Yeah, but the sickness is a sickness. Now, any Muslim can explain to us. So, did we did we learn something nice from this religion now to make our life is better? Imagine now that anyone he steal once in his lifetime or twice, we cut his feet and his, his hands. Imagine how beautiful the society we will have. People will not stop stealing. Still people will steal. Right? Aren't a lot of what? Of theories about Jesus in the Quran taking agnostic gospel, e.g. the gospel of Thomas. My friend, Muhammad, he never met Christians. Muhammad, he met people who they are called Nasara. And Nasara is a is a Christian cult, the same as Jehovah's Witnesses. And he adopt what those people, not all of it actually, he adopt what, what he like. Muhammad is a person who is doing business. You see, today there is something is called copyright, which means if I have an idea and you stole it from me, I can take you to court and, you know. I, I can I can make you face a consequence of his stealing. Muhammad is a thief. He stole ideas from all people around him. So he took some from the Nasara, which is not a Christian. They are they are Christian cult. He took some from the Jews, some from the Sabian, some from the Arab pagan around him. I mean, some from everybody. And this is what Islam is about. Arab is it's a some some. As you see, this punishment, by the way, this is an Arabian punishment. Punishment. The Arab before Islam, they used to cut the hand. If somebody stole an egg, Muhammad, he took it, he practiced it as it is, he made it as Allah told him. Now, <clears throat> we don't want to change the topic, focus with me, please. So now we uh, we're watching this rule. What kind of rule is this rule is? You know, I mean, that's it, the guy, he come to you, he said to him, kill him. Is that what judge do? Muhammad is acting as if he is God. He knew the future. He knew that this guy is going to steal five times, which is impossible. So he said from the beginning, kill him. And here showing us, that Islam is a very silly, stupid cult. It's about worshipping a man, making and fabricating stories about him to make him that he is a person he knew the future. When the Quran, Muhammad said in the Quran that he knew nothing of the of of the of the of the uh, in the future. Muhammad, he knew the guy he will steal again. <clears throat> Do he know? Any Muslim want to say something? Do Muhammad know the the future? <coughs> In the Quran, chapter 6, verse number 50, Muhammad, he said, Allah told him, tell them, I know nothing about the future. I know nothing of the unseen. And if I know, I will take advantage of it. Nothing. Zero. Let us find you the verse. <clears throat> Anytime there is a Muslim, we feel like he can qualify to do to to talk to me. Feel free, I will be happy to take your call in Pal Talk.
The story does not match with the Quran. Muhammad, he knew nothing about the future. So why the Muslims lie to us? Unless you want to tell me that Allah, he sent him a special verse about this guy and he gave him in details that he will steal five times. If this is the case, show me. What about adultery in Islam? How many of you believe Islam forbid adultery? Muslims who they are in the chat. Did Islam forbid adultery? Did Islam forbid adultery? Is it haram? Haram mean forbidden. Is it forbidden? If you ask any Muslim, they will say to you, sure. Adultery is forbidden. That's that's a big fat lie. Islam promote adultery. All what Islam did, the same as we spoke about stealing. You cannot steal from certain people, but you can steal from other kind of people. Adultery is the same. Muhammad, he made adultery legally exist. So in order to do adultery without being punished in Islam, you have to do it in an Islamic way. And this is one of them. Muhammad, he said, any man and a woman, they agree to have sex for fun for three days or three nights. Eh, do it. And if they like to continue longer, if they agree, go ahead for it. So, if you don't do it with this agreement, you are committing adultery. But if you agree, but isn't it? This is what's, uh, what prostitution is. This is called muta. You have to pay the women certain amount of money in return for a certain amount of time doing sex. To make it simple, you have to say, I want to sleep with you for two hours. You have to mention for how long. She have to say back to you, I agree to sleep with you for two hours for the amount of etc. If both of them, they say the same sentence, agree on the same thing, that is halal. <clears throat> so where is the forbidden of adultery? Only when marriage is allowed. Look at this guy, Fahim. So your prophet, he have thirteen, he have th thirteen women for what? Only when marriage is allowed. <laughs> I mean, those Muslims are really funny. Actually, the Quran never say go and marry. The Quran says go and if, therefore, the F two, F three, F four, and if you cannot afford it, then for one. Here we go. He did not say go and marry. This is a false translation. The Muslim they say go and marry. It says if of the women two and three and four. And by the way, it doesn't say or. This is false translation again. It says and. This is why I believe that early Muslims they have up to nine wives. I believe all early Muslims, they have up to nine wives. The fourth thing, this is something new. Because Muslims, they are disconnected with Islam. Because anyone who speaks Arabic, he will notice right away. It doesn't say, or, it says, wa mathna, wa thalath, wa ruba. Two, and three, and four. What is the total? Nine. All the caliphate, they have nine wives. Together. And the same time, it did not say, marry them. It says, if them. We showed you many times the reference where it says that the word nikah mean if. If. Do you remember when we spoke about the shaitan that Allah created for him a penis in the right side of his thigh and a, a vagina in the left thigh? So when he want to 
sex, have sex, he do nikah to himself. Nikah. This is what the word in Arabic. Yeah. The guy is the same person. He will uh, he will marry himself. Muhammad he said, Allah curse the one who do nikah to his hand. Talking about masturbation. Do you marry your hand? So when this guy he says to us that in Islam only one is allowed, that's a stupid. I mean, everybody knows that Muslims can have now four, but I believe the Quran never said four. The Quran says nine. This is false translation. If we change the translator, let just me show you how translation changed from from Abdul to Abdul, and it is going to make a big difference. Change the translator, change the Abdul, translation change. This guy is saying or. No, doesn't say or. Let's see a different one. And sometimes I feel like they copy each other. I think they are, they are fabricating translation. <clears throat> like this guy, he did not add and. Hmm? He says two, three, four. I mean, how silly this translation is. Two, three, four. What happened to the letter wa, which is equal to and in Arabic? So Allah, He said to you, go and F two, three, four. It's like we are entering a race. One, two, three, four, go. <laughs> Hilarious translation. So as you see, Islam does not give us a better life. Having a family, having many wives, will destroy the family. The children will hate each other. I remember once when I was a kid, I visited a Muslim. We are, I'm a kid, you know, in his house. So he said to his brother, the F word to his mother. So I look at him. I said, how do you say that to him? He said, what? He said, hey, is it? <laughs> are you stupid or what? Isn't it his mother, your mother? You know, I'm thinking about me as a Christian, you know, with a man, he married one woman. He said, no, no, his mother is not my mother. She is evil. She is ugly. She is disgusting. You know, so the, the children, they hate each other. They make parties against each other. So each chicken, like chicken, you know, each chicken, she have her babies around her and she teach them how to grab many as much they can from their dad. Go and ask dad for money, okay? Before your brother from the other woman, go and ask for more money. So all the women, they try to rip off the husband. And the reason Muslim women, they try always to make the husband spend money. Anyone knows why? Anyone knows why? What is the strategy? Who knows? <clears throat> They keep asking for new furniture even they like they, they make it dirty fast they are the children they ask them they can rip it off so your your dad will buy a new couch why because if he now if he's saving money then he will go and marry a new wife newer younger more beautiful the old one he sent her in the sent her to her mother hey go to your dad you are divorced so if he have money he will get more women so what they do they do their best to keep the husband poor and he is exhausted i remember once a muslim lady she asked my mother she said to her those couches you have in your house they are here for long why don't ask your husband to <laughs> to change them and my mom she said why he will change them they are good he said, didn't you know men, men, they, uh, you know, if they save money, they will go around. He said, not, not, you know, we don't do that. This is in your case. He cannot marry anyone except me. That's it. We are Christians, remember. The Muslim women. I remember once, uh, 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 this is in the kitchen. A Muslim woman, she come and she walk to help my mother. Like she give her, uh, you know, like a maid. So uh, she told her. You know, I really am, you know, I, I feel like uh, you Christians are lucky. So my mom, she said to her, why? She said, we, for us Muslim women, 
We are not sure if the food we are cooking, we are going to eat from it. What if he came back from, for some reason he is angry? He divorced me even when he is outside. He have a fight with a friend, he might divorce you. This is what the Muslims do. A Muslim, he say like, let us say you are doing something like, I swear by Allah, if this is true, I'm going to divorce my wife. Like, What she have to do with this, even she have nothing to do with it, she got divorced. So she is cooking the food, but yet she is not sure she will eat from the food she just cooked. So Islam did not give a security for the family and did not establish a family. The purpose of marriage in Islam is not marriage. This is why he did not use the word marriage. He used the word sex. F them. Another rule will show you Islam not only stupid and not only did not help us for better. What about this rule? In chapter 2, verse number 230, it says, speaking, this is speaking about a, a, if a man, he divorces his wife three times. The woman, she cannot go back to the husband who divorced her unless she find a new husband and he F her. And after he F her, he divorced her. And after he divorced her, she can go to the previous husband. Any Muslim can tell me how smart that is? Is that going to make my life better? Is that how we protect women? The Muslim, they say to you, oh, uh, there's men, they are abusing the right of divorce. Uh, well, you are the one who make them abuse it because you made it so easy. You say the word divorce, she is gone. That's it. Secondly, why you don't, if, if you are protecting the women from divorce, what about you say, if you divorce her once, huh? That's it, you cannot have her. What is the point of going and sleeping with someone else? What is that? What, what is that will do? Where is justice? And you are not protecting the women now because the women, the poor woman, she is the one who will go sleep around. What about you say to the man, if you divorce your wife three times, we will make you sleep with the man <laughs> in order to get to get the women back. <laughs> I mean, the man is the one who divorced her. She is a victim. So where is the solution here? The guy, he don't care. Obviously, if he cares, he will not divorce her. So the poor women, because now she has kids. You know, women, they are attached to their babies. So now the, the stupid husband, he divorced her three times. Oh, and he said, that's it. You cannot stay home. I divorced her three times. I can't remarry you again. So now what she will do, she will go and find the husband to sleep with her at least for one night and divorce her in the morning so she can come back to her family. Actually, the Muslims, they have many movies about those stories, comedy movies. Like I remember there's a there's an Egyptian actor, his name Adil Imam. Uh, 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 you know, he's a very naive person, supposedly. And there's a bunch of rich men, Muslims, who divorce their wives. So each time one of them, he divorces his wife three times. They call this guy who work as a janitor to sleep to to marry the wife for one night, but they but they ask him, "Don't sleep with her, okay?" But this is haram in Islam. You cannot do that. He have to sleep with her. So the guy he act as if he is not going to sleep with them, but when they leave them alone, because they have to leave them alone at home for the whole night. Imagine the husband. The husband is finding a donkey to his wife to f her. Any Muslim who speak Arabic, he knew what I'm talking about. A Muslim man, he will turn into a pimp to practice Quran because this is a pimp act. You are a man who want to get his wife back, but now you cannot get her unless she go and F somebody. 
And let me show you a story to explain this story here. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. It's about a woman. Her husband did beat her until he made her skin greener than her clothes. She came to Aisha and she said to her, Look, look what my husband did to me. And she showed her her skin and how her skin became a green the same as her clothes. It was the habit of the ladies to support each other. So Aisha, now she will take the side of the women. You see the, the Islamic logic, huh? I mean, women supporting women, but she's not right. Allah Messenger came, said, Aisha, she said, I have not seen any suffering women suffering as much as a believing woman. Look, her skin is greener than her clothes. From what? From beating. The Muslim, they lie to us and they say, we beat them lightly. Now, did the Prophet of Allah say to him, shame on you? No. Actually, some stories he says, because of this story, he gave him a verse to beat women. When Abu Abdul Rahman heard that his wife came to the Prophet, he go there too. And the story, you know, continue. And then the guy, he says, by Allah, or oh Allah Messenger, she had told a lie, told a lie about what? She claimed that he cannot have sex with her. I am very strong. I can satisfy her, but she is disobedient and she won't go back to Rifa. Who is Rifa? Anyone knows who is Rifa? Rifa is the previous husband. Look at the Islamic drama. You see the wise Muhammad, what he did? So now this woman, huh? This woman, she refused to sleep with this husband. But why? Because she did not marry him to sleep with him. She married him because Quran forced her to marry a man in order to go back to her husband. So she did not marry the guy because she liked the guy. But this is the only way to get back. She want to go back to her husband. And the new husband, he knew that. And look what Muhammad said to her. Muhammad, he said to her, Ah, <laughs> if this is your intention, you know that this is unlawful for you, haram, for a haram. You cannot remarry Rifa unless Abdul Rahman tastes your juice. It doesn't say, by the way, had sexual intercourse with you, but it means that, but it means to taste her juice too. Taste your or orgasm. Uh, unless Abdul Rahman, he had boom boom with you. Now look at this logic. This religion now is a creating the problems in the top of the problem. The first problem was what? Was a guy divorced his wife, Muhammad, he made the divorce so easy. So a man, he said, divorce, you are divorced, that's it. There's no even need for court, etc. Just divorce, you are divorced. Now he divorced her three times. Now the women, she want to go back to the husband. But Muhammad, he made a rule in the Quran that she cannot go back to the husband unless she go and sleep with a new husband. The women, she found a new husband. She thought if she marry him without having sex with him, she can't do it. But Muhammad, he said, no, 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 no. Hold on. Haram. Haram. You have to F the new man so you can go back and the, or the the previous husband he can f you do you see it did islam make our life better is that a solution for a problem or this is now became a problem how many how many men now this woman she have okay so now this guy he f her and then second day he divorced her she go back to the previous husband. He marry her. He say after a while, he get angry from her. He divorced her three times. So now she go and marry a new husband. He sleep with her. And then he divorce her. And now she go back to the previous husband. I mean, what is that? There's no dignity. There's no respect for what the word marriage. This is not marriage. This is a relation. This is a sexual contract. This is why 
Islam never speak about marriage. Islam speak about sexual contract. There is employer and there is an employee. The employer is the man, the employee is the woman. The woman she get paid for sex. It's not for free. And the man, he enjoy it. What the Quran says about paying for enjoying it. <clears throat> enjoying what exactly? Chapter 4, verse number 24. It's forbidden for you, married women, except the slaves. Slaves, if they are married, still you can have you can have sex with them. Not to marry them. In Islam, it's forbidden for you, married women, but not your slaves. Slaves you capture, even if they are married, you can rape them. And then he says, any anyone. You enjoy it. You see here the translation. It says you enjoy thereby. What thereby? Thereby. In Arabic, it says, "Famas tamtatum bihi minhunna." Bihi is their vagina. Whatever you enjoy of it. So because you enjoy it, which is the vagina, now the women she have wages. Do you see it? The women she got wages and by the way here this is about the muta famous tamtatum bihi you pay for sex change the translation so the muslim will not say well, look I mean, this guy maybe he is choosing whatever any muslim in the text want to choose one for me what uh, what translation you like Huh? <clears throat> Any Abdul? So those whom you enjoy, <laughs> you enjoyed sexual relationship, give them their wages. Do you see it? So what the what the purpose of this contract? You do sexual intercourse. You pay the women their wages. How are you, Hamdi? You are upset, Hamdi. You wanna you wanna call me in uh, pal talk? If there is any Muslim, he have a long beard. He feel like he wanna talk to me. I can open my pal talk. You can call me there. What do you say? Everything forbidden or hated about the West will be their Hidayah in paradise. Okay. You see, just to show you how silly the Muslims look, let me show you this. This guy now supposedly is, uh, I mean, is, uh, is, that a, is, that a, is that a wisdom? Everything forbidden for Muslims, forbidden or hated about the West, will be their hidayah in paradise, which means it will be in your guidance. Actually, you Muslims, in the West there is many things forbidden, which is good. As an example, in the West you cannot have sex with children, in Islam you can. Correct? So, you know, you claim that you are better than the West? In, in, in which way? In which way you are better than the West? In Islam, you can beat your wife. Quran, chapter 4, verse number 34. You claim you are better than in, in the West. Okay, let us see if that is really something good. 
You see, in the Muslim translation, they say to you, uh, when, when a woman, she you fear her obedience, uh, first admonish them. Next, if you refuse, share a bit, uh, refuse, share but with the, But the Quran never says first and next, you liar. Where is the first? Where is the second? Where is the third? Beat them. Beat them. Scourge them. Now, if Islam is religion who gives solutions, is beating women will give solutions, will make women better? What do you think, people? If we start, if we men, we start beating women, is that going to make the women a better wife? What do you say? Who is a Muslim when I answer us? Who is the Muslim when I tell us what is the wisdom behind beating women? Is that a wise decision by Allah? CP favorite verse not everyone says to me Lord Lord should enter the end yeah th uh, th this is not my favorite verse but this is saying say you know this is a refute many claims all the Bible is my first my my you know every word of the Christ is a, is my favorite verse but this is a verse I quote always because this is a this is a sentence refute all the false lies Muslims they say about us as an example they say that the Christian they say Christ died for our sin that's mean they can do sin right you get my point so one sentence from Christ will get them all busted no when we say that Christ he died for our sin that's mean he's, he's doing his best to open the door for us to be saved and he gave his life but doesn't mean I can have and I can do sin as I wish this is a lie that's why I say I quote this verse not everyone says to me Lord Lord but let us go back here if we beat our wife and by the way the Quran does not even say a woman who they are bad the Quran says, Those you afraid, afraid of, they may be thinking about maybe uh, they don't sound like they are so much happy to obey you. They did not even disobey you yet. Like you said to your wife, make me some tea. And she didn't go or she don't stand up right away like 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 a light and she go to the kitchen but hey uh, make some tea uh, Fatima Fatima she is watching TV she did not stood up right away uh oh man she did not she is my servant I I paid for her I paid for her sex I paid for her you know to have her and now she she is my servant what so you scream at her you admonish her, she do it again. Then you jail her in the bedroom. It's not about don't have sex with her. It's about jailing them. Jail them in their rooms. Or if you want, just beat the hell of her. The Muslim, they say, no, we beat them lightly. We beat them lightly. What is the word here? for beat them lightly anybody can show me the muslim can show me the word lightly we just showed you the hadith where the guy he did beat his wife until her skin became a greener than her clothes and muhammad took the side of the husband correct guys do you see it <coughs> Do we have any Muslim here? Who is a Muslim man? He is proud to say, I am happy to see my mother getting beaten by my by her husband. Regardless who, who is her, her husband, your father or someone else. I want you to be honest. Any man is happy to see his mother Beaten by a man. Get beaten by a man. Anyone? I 
Are you going to be happy to see such a scene? Are you going to stand watching? The husband of your mother beating your mother? Be honest with me. Is that the dignity Islam gave you? What if the wife is good in Taekwondo and fight back? Yeah, but Islam did not give her right to fight back. This is the issue. Which means, my friend, if, if a woman in the Middle East, she called the police and she says, my husband is beating me, the police will not come because they can't involve. This is his right. Do you understand? Legally, this is his right. He can beat her. The only way for her to take him to court if he did beat her like he broke his bones, uh, you know, like it became extreme, almost the women die. Otherwise, the man, he can beat you. There's a guy in, uh, in Spain, he's a Muslim, he made a book about how to beat your wife. And he was advising the Muslims because in Europe, if you beat your wife and somehow she called the police for you, and there's marks in her skin, you will go to jail. So he was telling them, you buy boards, like, you know, the, like, uh, the one you, the four boxes, and you put it under her panty. And then you beat her, like you beat her with a shoe or your leather belt. This way will not leave marks this is what the book's saying. I can show it to you. Hold on. Let me let me let me find the book. Give me a second. Teaching men how to beat their wives in Europe. Oh, I still mean nothing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I don't know how many Muslims now will, will buy this book. Imam wrapped for wife beating book. A Muslim cleric who wrote a book that advised men how to beat up their wives without leaving, like any things will, you know, cause you to go to the court. Do you see it? And this is the beautiful Imam, in case you want to contact him to teach, to teach you. This is what Islam. Do you see it? This man, he want to teach the husband to beat his wife so good news for your mother as Muslims now your mother she is going to be spanked in her ass with no marks I mean obviously Islam make me feel proud so is that going to make our life better men beating women and why you ask you know like you ask a Muslim man why you can beat your wife he says don't you beat your child <laughs> women for them are like children they are stupid they are not equal a creature they are not a human they are just a sex toy so as you see Islam did not bring something good for mankind this is evil this is stupid and this will destroy families and if a woman she live with a man like this you can imagine how hell of a life this life is Imagine when she sleep with this idiot who is in the screen. And look, he's wearing a suit. I mean, look at this guy. He's wearing a suit. When you see a person wearing a suit like this, you would think that this guy is a civil person. Hmm? Look, you have a tie, you have a suit. Christian Prince, he don't have a suit. He don't wear a tie. Hmm? This is what Islam? And that will make the family what is what will happen to the human being who is a female woman after you beat her how she will feel you muslims your god allah he he, don't, he have no dignity 
So be because you have a penis and she don't have one, and you are physically stronger, you can beat her. What if the woman, she is stronger than you? Can she beat you? No. And this is why sometimes I wonder how silly a Western woman when she marry a Muslim man. But she will say to you, he, she's, he's nice to me. Oh, he's living in the West. Just wait until he go and take your vacation to his country. Stay there. And let us see how, how nice he is. There is a there is a movie. It's called Not Without My Daughter. I don't know how many of you saw it. It's about an American woman. She married, and this is supposedly a real story. It became a movie. She married an Iranian Muslim doctor. In the USA, he was very nice, etc. He took her to Iran. He treated her like a goat. In the West, you can call the police for him. In a second, they will be at your home. And there, if you call the police, they will arrest you. Actually, in Islamic countries, if the woman leave the house without permission of her husband, he will call the police for her, and she will be came. Her name will be announced as wanted, and she will be arrested in any police checkpoint. They call it in Islamic countries, Bayt al -ta, the house of obedience law. The house of obedience. Which means the police will go. Let's say you, 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 your husband, he did beat you. You get upset. You took your stuff when he is away. You go home to your dad. The husband, he can bring you like a goat. He called the police. The police, they will go and they will find you. And they will arrest you as a criminal. And they will come home and they will deliver it to your husband so he can beat you again. So, what is the purpose of Islam? What Islam accomplished for us? You know, let me tell you something. A man who beat a woman, he is a coward. Now, I understand that there is some women, they are crazy. They can be. You know, maybe they are the one who will beat you. If somebody want to beat you, defend yourself. I mean, whoever the one who will beat, a woman or a, or, or a man, I believe everybody have the right to defend himself. So if a woman, she is a crazy, she want to beat a man, well, the man, then he can defend himself. But to say, to say, go and beat women, that is disgusting. Nobody have the right to beat anyone. If the man, he beat the women, the women have the right to defend herself. Because who are you? Like, did you did you own her? Is she your goat? Even goats, you cannot beat her in, 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 in the West. In the West, if, they, if the police see you beating a dog, you go to jail. So, in Islamic countries, Muslim women... She don't have the right of a dog in America. Actually, in America, if you leave your dog in the car, you might go to jail for a long time in the summer. If you don't, if, if your neighbor, he noticed that your dog is hungry and you are not feeding him right, you go to jail. They will take you to court and you might end for a year or two in jail. So how you beat a human being? And she is your wife. And then we make books about how to beat the wife without leaving marks. Muslims, be honest with me. How many of you right now searching for this book in Amazon? Be honest with me. This person, he is inspired by Allah. He is doing what Allah said. Allah said, beat them. So who is wrong? 
Who is a Muslim he is willing to be brave enough to say this is disgusting? Anyone? I remember once I was living in an apartment and I want to go to work. There's a screen door in the front of the apartment. I could not open the screen door because there's a there's a dog sleeping there. I push the screen, he don't want to move. His Majesty is just, uh, that's it. You know, this is in the front of the door, he like it there. I say to him, hey Abdul, hey potato, move. I want to go to work, he don't want to move. I call him Jimmy, I call him uh, Tommy, I call him Ahmad, I call him, he don't want to move. I don't know what his name. Please move, I want to go. He want to go. So I, the, I call the police. And the police, they treated him nicely. And they took him to their car. He got a free ride. This is a dog. Yeah, dogs have names. His name may be Jimmy, Tommy, Ahmed. You never know. We try all the names, he don't want to move. So, what's wrong with you Muslims? What is good in Islam? What about having sex with the children? What about having a child wife? If you go, you can search on YouTube, there's a debate between me and the Muslim doctor. He's a doctor. This guy is an educated. He was saying to me, what's wrong with having sex with the baby? Baby girl, she is one day old. He said it says halal, but I did not do it. One day old. One day old. As long as you don't do intercourse, it's okay. Yeah, he said, my baby wife, you remember? Baby wife. You can go and search for the video. What do you say? Is the world will be better if we have children in our bed and we have sex with them? Is that uh, what God he wants? The Muslims, they have tons of articles about their prophet, how amazing he is. Will you tell me, what is, what is amazing about a man at the age of 54, yet he marry a girl at the age of six? And six in the Islamic calendar is five in our calendar. Remember, Muslim calendar is wrong. What made a man who is busy spreading the religion of Allah think about having little child in his bed? What they share together? <clears throat> Any Muslim can tell me? What Muhammad he share with this little child? I mean, what is the... What, when we say marriage, you know, marriage is what? I mean, there's two people who they want to establish a family. Okay. How a child, she is six years old, can establish a family with a man, he is 54 years old, and what he liked about her. I will tell you what Muhammad liked about her. Anyone remember where Muhammad, he said to a man, who is happily married? Why you don't marry a child wife? That is the devilish Muhammad. Muhammad, 
there is a guy of his companions they were doing an attack on the neighbors stealing their money and their way he noticed that this guy his name is Jabir he is a rush he want to go home so Muhammad he said to him Jabir have you married the man he said yes the Prophet again said a virgin or previously married what's your business look at this question if Muhammad is a decent man is that is that a legitimate question what does that mean you want to know if her she stepped with someone before or not is that your business what this question is about <coughs> evil the man he said a previously married whereupon the messenger said why why you don't marry a young girl so you could sport with her and she could sport with you what what is the purpose of Muhammad now giving advice what is the advice is about the man is happily married to a woman she is previously married which means she is already a woman Muhammad you don't like that he's asking the guy what's wrong with you what's wrong with you why you don't marry a child so you can play with her do you remember before I told you that sex with the children is a sickness we spoke about that right it's a sickness obviously Muhammad is a sick person he did not say because she will be a better wife he did not say she will love you more he said what is the purpose of this marriage so you could sport with her and sport with you Muhammad looking just for fun with the child sexual fun and here that inspire us let us say that the one I'm not using the right word uh, what is the word like when you go deep inside the psychology of a human being I'm not sure what the word will be in English so you are you are you are you are we are digging through the mind of Muhammad deep inside him this is telling us what Muhammad he think about sexuality with the children because when you give an advice to someone and you say to him what you just what we just heard that's mean this is your belief correct guys and this is the best belief for him it's so clear that Islam make us more sick Islam legalize being sick child molesters so now the purpose of marriage is not about finding a woman she fit to be equal to me to have a life no it's about sporting with her and sporting with me do you see it if there is any Muslim want to say something Any Muslim have an answer for this? And then, by the way, the guy, he got him busted. He said to him, I wanted to marry a woman because my brother, he left me a bunch of children. So I'm not going to marry a child to be with the children. You see, he said to him, my brother Abdullah, he died fighting for you. And uh, he left for me nine or seven daughters behind him. I, therefore, did not approve the idea should I bring a girl which means a child do you see it like them <laughs> do you know this it's not sporting like you know sport it's like you're playing with her to la you know just to have fun with her this is the whole this, this is what the word in Arabic so they translate as sporting play with her so the guy said to him I have nine, nine, uh, 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 nine orphans in my house. They are the daughters of my son, my brother. So I cannot bring another child with them. Do you see what happened? So the man is a wise man. Muhammad is evil. 
The man is a wise man. He marry a woman so she can take care of the kids. Muhammad, you don't like that. He want him to bring a child so because it's fun for Muhammad to have a child for as a wife. So you play with her. And here you notice something very, very disgusting. Why a person he like to marry a child? Anyone knows? Think deeply with me. Why really a man he want to marry a child? If we can call it marriage. Because a child is very easy to fool. You can be the most stupid idiot donkey in the world. If you have a child, give her some candies. And that's it. Right? She have no opinion. She have not, you know, you can, you, can, you can adjust her as you wish. You can force her to do things as you wish. You can make her addicted to things as you wish. She is not a woman who will ask you why, how, or this is not right. She is just a child. And this is why Muhammadi believe they are the best to play with. Here, play is about what? We're talking about a wife, supposedly. You know what I mean? When you are a child, you know, you are very easy to control. Do this, don't do that. There's a big guy in front of you saying to you what to do. How in the world Islam can be better for for us? So what Islam brought us is nothing but evil. It's really disgusting. Any Muslim can prove me wrong? So now what is else? Why Muhammad he behaved like this? Richard is asking. My friend, it's obviously Muhammad is a sick person. I mean, no, come on. We analyze the thinking. You see, every everybody in this world he he think in his own way. As an example, I I bought in the winter. I bought a, a bird feeder. It's called bill feeder, bird feeder, right? But if I am a person who enjoy killing little birds, I will put the feeder and then I will I will kill them. You know, I will make the feeder a trap. The feeder is meant to be feed the birds, not to kill them. But depending on your thinking, what do you want? So everything around us is exist. And we can make what we do legitimate if we are evil. So Muhammad, he made it he, he, like he is the, he, now he is teaching the Muslims the purpose of life, the purpose of Islam. This is the best way to enjoy life. You know, you bring a child and you play with her. And now a Muslim who believe Muhammad is the best of mankind, he will believe this is the best way to live. This is the prophet talking. And by the way, here we find many evil stuff. Because if a man he is married, forget about Muhammad now, is asking him to go and find a child wife. Let us say it is not a child wife. What's your business? The man is happily married. Why are you advising him to find different women? You know what I mean? Isn't this alone is evil? Let us say you are visiting me in my home and you are married. And I say to you, huh? Hey, James, did you marry a virgin or. A widow or a previously married. What's your business? I mean, the question alone is a shame. What's your business? A virgin? You are asking me if I marry a virgin? 
This question alone is an insult for anyone have a dignity. And then you give an advice. Huh? You marry a woman previously married. <laughs> Why you don't marry someone else? What's your business? I mean, this is the devil. This is the devil. The devil, he tried to spread hatred between a wife and husband. That's what the, even the Quran said. Isn't the Quran said that Allah, he sent to angels to teach black magic. He sent them in the Babylon, you remember? You remember, guys? Let us see how many of you have a good memory. In chapter 2, verse number 102, it says a story that Allah, he sent two angels in the Babylon, which is a fiction story. Muhammad, he copied and he claimed it's true. And he sent two angels. Their name is Harut and Marut. And they open a school. And the school is to teach the husband, or to teach people, sorry, how to make the husband and the wife fight. Do you see it? Before they teach you, they say disclaimer, disclaimer. We are teaching you this to practice it only in one case. Which is, people to learn how to cause division between the man and the wife. Muhammad is the devil. Do we agree, guys? Isn't this is the devil? Allah is the devil. Why Allah want to send that angels to open a school to teach me how to divide the family? Look, when while Jesus saying the man and the old, even the Old Testament that the man he will leave his parents and they will become a khad, they will become one. So why Jesus saying that we became a one? Muhammad is saying divide them. Because if we go back to the story here about the guy who is Muhammad saying to him, why you don't find a child? This guy now will go home if he is a bad person or he is a stupid. And he start thinking about the advice of Muhammad. What will happen next? You know, you know what I mean, guys? What will happen next? After this conversation, if this guy is not smart, he will go home and say, ah, the prophet, he advised me. Why I don't go and get a young girl? Huh? This is the devil. The man was happily married until Muhammad he got involved. Compare between this and the teaching of Jesus. The teaching of Jesus about marriage will make our life stronger. Beautiful. The Messiah, he described the husband the same as a Christ giving himself to the church. Which means the man, he give himself to the wife as if she is holy church, not as his holy goat to beat her. The women in Christianity, she is a partner forever and this is how it's supposed to be. The women in Islam, she is just to sport with her. So what Islam brought for us? If you go in the Middle East, Christians are a minority, but they are the most successful people. Why? Because family is strong. One husband, one wife, and the family, they are in love with each other. You don't find that between Muslims. Many wives, many children, and the children, they hate each other. Parties. The wives, the wives of Muhammad, they were fighting with each other. If you remember the story, it's in the, in the Hadith and even in the Quran.
What else? Any Muslim can give me something good about Islam? I mean, I don't see anything good. There's no marriage. There's no loyalty. There's no life. Everything is about living, you know, like, a, you know, we take advantage of the weak. Islam is about the, the strong taking advantage of the weak. The strong is the man, the weak is the women. And Islam made the women weaker. If you, Guys, the Muslim, they say to us that Islam gave the women their rights. And the Muslims, they made books about that. This is a, this is a stupid statement. The women in Islam, she is beaten. What right? The women in Islam, she can't even leave the house without permission of the husband. Muhammad, he said, no, no nation will be succeed if a woman, she lead them. But Muhammad himself, he used to work for a woman before Islam. Just in the time of Muhammad Khadija, she was a businesswoman. Muhammad himself, he worked for her. What happened after Muhammad married Khadija? And Muhammad said, I am a prophet. Women became inside a plastic or let us say a burqa container. Even in Saudi Arabia, they were discussing that shouldn't we change the burqa from two eyes to make it one eye? Two eyes is too much. They don't want the women to see with two eyes. They want the women to see only with one eye. And maybe some of you think I'm joking. I'm not. I mean, why she need two eyes? One is enough. One eye. And if they even they can close the second this this one eye, they will close it. Why you lie and you say Islam gave the women their rights? Hmm? They're right? They're right in what? They're right in what exactly? They made tons of articles which is full of lies. Muslim women, she have rights. They are right. True story. Any Muslim want to give us an advice about something we missed in Islam is good? Until now, I did not find one good thing about Islam to be, to be considered to be good. What about hating the neighbors, not to take them as a friends? Take not Christians and Jews as a friends. What about Islam teaching me to be hypocrite? Islam is a religion of hypocrisy. Taqiyya, taqiyya is the flag of hypocrisy. And the Muslims, they're proud about it. For those who do not know taqiyya, taqiyya is, you can say to someone he is not a Muslim, I love you, but in your heart you hate him. And this is in chapter 3, verse number 28.
And the funny, the Muslims, they call us hypocrites. We are the hypocrites. But the Quran teaching them to be hypocrite. While Jesus saying, love your enemy, Muhammad, he says, okay, you cannot take them as a friend, okay? You can't take them as a friend. They are our enemies. But brother, you can read with me carefully. If a person, he take non-Muslims as friend, seeking might and honor, being sincere. I hope the text is clear for you. Being sincere, do you see it? The one who is sincere. Seeking might and honor by taking the hypocrites, which is me supposing us, the disbelievers, as a friend, he has no connection with Allah. That's it. He is not a Muslim. The second a Muslim, he take you as a friend and he mean it, really? He is not a Muslim. He has no connection with Allah. He has no honor. He has no mercy, no protection with me. Muslims can attack him, kill him, rape his wife. Unless it be ye but guard yourself against them it's like you know to do protect yourself you cannot say to them i hate america i want to kill all the american but you, you can say i love america you go to the court you want to take citizenship you say to you make a pledge you make a pledge but in your heart look at let us see save yourself from them taking it as it were security saving yourself from them by speaking in a friendly way toward them while your heart is like this do you see it? So did Islam brought something better for us? So now we cannot be friends. Me, I, me, myself, I have no problem to have a Muslim as a friend. Why not? He might be a nice person. Somebody is a Christian, he might be a Christian by name. He might be evil, we don't know. But now because of teaching of Islam, teaching hate, I cannot trust a Muslim to be my friend. But do I like to have a Muslim as a friend? Why not? But because Islam is religion of hypocrisy and evil, it put a wall between me and the Muslims to be friends. So now a true Muslim, a really a believer in Islam, he have to follow the Quran. Many of you might say, I have a Muslim friend. My friend, I have no comment. I don't know how silly you are. I don't know how smart you are. The text in the front of you, and by the way, this is the official government of the Kingdom of Jordan website. This is your friend, the King of Jordan, teaching his people what to do. The King of Jordan, he come to the White House and he gave a big hug. Two weeks ago, he was making a speech in a church in Germany. Speaking about the mercy of Allah, this is his website. This is the official website of the royal family of the Kingdom of Jordan. Who he claimed that he is from the family of Muhammad. Your neighbor, he refused to shake your hand so you cut his grass. Well, come over, cut my grass too. I will not shake my hands with you. What is that? This is evil. So what Islam brought to us? What is good about it? So now the Muslims, they feel they are they are under conspiracy. Everybody is against them. Islam made them believe the Jews, they hate you. The Christian, they hate you. The Hindus, they hate you. The Buddhists, they hate you. The, athe the atheists, they hate you. Everybody, and you are the enemy of everybody. Islam did not bring peace. Islam is bringing war and division and evil. And that is satanic. For me, why I will not love to help somebody as a Muslim? Why I will not do that? Why I will not do good to him? Why I should hate him? That's not right. In Islam, no. You have even to hate even your family. The Quran in chapter 9, verse number 23. And here, this is about, this is not metaphorical. This is not metaphorical. This is literally. 
Like the Muslim, they say to you that Jesus says, if you don't hate your family, it's a, but Jesus said, hate no one. What he's talking about that if you are, if you if you prefer your family more than me, that's mean you don't belong to me. The Muslim, they will quote for you a verse says, Jesus says, I, I brought I brought sword, but the sword is not a sword to kill. That is a sword on us, which means we will suffer, we will sacrifice. People will hate us. This is your Quran. Oh, who you believe. Choose not your father and your brothers as a friend. Even your father and your and your and your brother cannot be your friends. So who can be your friend? Nobody. In the top of that, Islam is a fascist cult. You see, there's some some evil, uh, like uh, let us say, uh, evil, evil thinking to see that they are supreme, like white supremacist, or even some black. They think they think they are black supremacist. Anyone who think he is supreme is stupid and he is evil. Islam teach that. Muslims are supremacist. Read carefully with me. Muhammad, he said to them in the Quran that the Muslims are the best of mankind. The Muslim, they quote for you this verse, they say, this is a verse saying that the best of mankind is us to be benefit for the benefit of mankind, but they will not tell you what the verse is about. The verse is about that we are fascist. The teaching of Islam teaches us to be fascist. We are the best and you are no one. You are equal to an animal to the point we can put the chain around your neck. Read carefully. You are the best of people ever raised up between two bracket to the benefit. You see the benefit? Okay, what is the benefit? Benefit of mankind. So when you hear this, that's that's wonderful. I mean, Islam saying that Muslims, if they are really the good Muslims, are the one who they are for the benefit of mankind. That's wonderful. The verse until now, it is so nice. I love it actually. But the verse have an evil meaning. The best for mankind are those who bring them, bring who? The mankind with chains around their necks till they embrace Islam. Do you see it? Do you see it? So now, not only we have a religion teaching violence against females, disrespecting women, having sex with the children, injustice, even in rules like normal life, like uh, stealing and etc., even teaching hypocrisy and hatred and teaching supremacists that we are supreme and the rest are a bunch of animals we can put chains around their necks. And this is absolutely one billion percent against the teaching of God as we learn in the Bible. A person who hate anyone for a race, he is no Christian. A person who is white, he hates somebody is black, he is no Christian. A person who is black, he hates someone because he's white or Asian, he is no Christian. A person who hate, he is no Christian anyway. Love your enemy, plus those who curse you. Pray for them. And look at Muhammad. Additional to that, not only Islam teach that Muslims are supremacist, ethnic, even though they are not ethnic, but Islam teach them that they are they are one ummah, which means one nation. The Muslims are a nation. They are not like us. They are a different nation. 
This was ethnic. So ethnic and Islam became Islam itself is an ethnic and it became an identity. What about other disgusting teaching? Being evil to animals. Muhammad he ordered to kill all the dogs. But Muhammad he have a special treatment for black dogs. He believed that black dogs are the devil. So Islam not only unfair to mankind, Islam is big problem for poor animals. Even a lizard, Muhammad, he ordered the Muslims to kill them. And by the way, lizards are very useful animals. He ordered to kill all dogs in the beginning. And then the people, he start complaining. So he said, okay, kill only the black dog. Even even a salamander or a lizard, Muhammad, he want him to die. So Islam will will uh, you know uh, enforcing Islam on people will change the people to 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 evil, not to good. Even the poor salamander, you want to kill him? Why? Why? Because Muhammad he come with a fiction story that Mister Salamander was trying to burn Abraham. Salamander, he was trying to burn Abraham. Are you sure, Muhammad? So the black dog is the devil. The black snake is the devil. The black bird is the devil. And now we have Mr. Salamander is an enemy for Allah. And Allah, he asked Muslim to do jihad against Salamander. I mean, think about it. Obviously, Salamander is very dangerous. I mean, look at this guy. Let us find you a salamander. <laughs> salamander is evil. Proving, I mean, everybody knows that salamander is evil. Poor little tiny animal. It's not even the size of your finger. This is the enemy of Allah. Especially this one because he's black. And Allah, he hates him very much. This one, he was trying to burn Abraham. Obviously, this is a true story. What we can do now? Muhammad, he don't like Salamander. So what we need to do now? We, I'm going to join the Mujahideen and start a holy war on Salamander. So, Muhammad, he bring for you fairy tale stories would affect even the life of a poor animal. Do you know that there is the Muslims, they have a fatwa, which is a holy order to kill Mickey Mouse? Do you know that? They made the fatwa that Mickey Mouse should be killed. He's the enemy of Allah. You think I'm joking? The video is all over. This is this is a Saudi. This is this is not a uh, this is a, not a joke. 
Those are big shakes. Mickey Mouse is the enemy of Allah. And by the way, Mickey Mouse saying hello, he's hiding, but he's okay. Even Mickey Mouse, the cartoon, they want to kill him. I don't know what to count for you, how stupid this cult is. How far things can go. Jihad on Tom and Jerry. <laughs> Jihad on Tom and Jerry. <laughs> I mean, do I need more comment to show you how stupid this religion is? And still you will see a person who have a, a you know, like a, a Western, a Western idiot, he converted to Islam. I don't know what's wrong with you. You Western, what's wrong with you? Are you mentally ill? And I was wondering why I don't see Mickey Mouse no more. Where is Mickey Mouse? Where is Mickey Mouse? <laughs> I mean, what happened? Where's Mickey Mouse? Even a cartoon. It's a cartoon, you idiot. The first bicycle, you know, and this this is something you know uh, the one who told me he'd been taught by his father he's a, Sa a saudi uh, the first bicycle arrived to saudi arabia do you know what happened to it a guy he came he was abroad he came with bicycle guess what they did to, the, to it the guy he brought it to his house he walked around with it like for five minutes and he put it in the house an hour or two he found like two, three thousand people around the house and they are shouting Takbir Allahu Akbar. They took the bicycle to the Sharia court and the judge, he ordered to cut the neck of the, uh, of, of the bike because this is the bike of the devil. A bicycle. The bicycle is the devil. They never saw one before. A guy, he made the containers for flowers in his house in the garden. He made them like you know he uh, he, he like art, and he made them look like ducks. Somebody came to visit him, and he saw those ducks in the yard. He reported him to the Sharia law court. Suddenly, the police came, people came, and then the guy he came and he read the order from the Sharia court to cut the necks of the ducks. And then the guy, he came and he's wearing a mask and he took a big, huge sword, Allahu Akbar, and he cut the neck of the duck, which is uh, <laughs> made from, what they call it, this, uh, the white material. <laughs> it's not a concrete, it's very easy to break. And the Muslim, they shout, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So I'm not surprised they are upset from Mickey Mouse. So my friend, as you see, I, I cannot find something good. I mean, if I want to count for you the stupid, evil stuff of this religion, it's endless. And actually, it's endless. I'm doing this for how many years? And never end. This is the most stupid cult ever. This is a cult can destroy humanity, can destroy history, 
can destroy civilization. Music is haram. Art is haram. Uh, 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 football is haram. Uh, chess is haram. I mean, what is not haram? Music, in case you do not know, it's haram. Forbidden. Okay. What? I uh, want to play chess. Uh, haram. You cannot. Okay. A football. Haram. Volleyball. Haram. Hmm? What is the only sport is allowed in Islam? Shooting with the arrow, riding horses and swim because it's what the prophet says. Teach your children to shoot, to ride the horses and to swim. That's it. Anything else is haram. Yawning is haram. Do you know that yawning? If you do commit, if you do yawning, you are committing sin. Allah, uh, Allah get upset from those who do yawn. Allah likes sneezing. Makes sense. And look at this stupid cult. Have you ever heard of a god? He liked those who sneeze, and he hate those who yawn. So now we cannot do yawning. You do yani shaitan, he will piss in your nose, in your in your mouth, and he will laugh at you. I mean, look at the knowledge of this man. This man, he his knowledge is beyond normal. Hmm? Camel urine is halal. Uh, wine is haram. Drinking piss. So now we cannot drink wine, but we can drink piss, which is an acid. So if is alcohol can cause a problem, the acid will cause million a problem. This is acid. This is piss. A piss of a camel. You see, the piss of a camel is different from a piss of different animal. Anyone knows why? Anyone knows why the animal piss is very harmful more than other piss? Who knows why? What do you think? Camels, they live where? In the desert, right? Animals who live in the desert, they are built not to waste water, which means they filter their body is different. You see, uh, uh, an elephant who lives in, in India, he do not need to save water. There's water everywhere. Or Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka. Wherever he goes, there's water. So water is not a problem. But those animals are made to reserve water as much as they can. So the piss of the camel is very concentrated. You are drinking a pure acid. You can search right now in YouTube or in Google and you will see how the Muslims they die from a drinking camel urine to the point United Nations they made a warning about it but who cares? nobody listen Drinking camel urine, and they make videos to do dawah, brother. Teach you how to drink camel urine. This guy here, Dr. Muhammad Salah, live from Al Medina. Hmm? This is the guy you remember him. This is the guy you remember him. This is the guy from the follower of Rashad Khalifa, the one who ran from. He was debating me. A deep potato. You remember him? Shish kebab. Yeah. Did the Prophet Muhammad ever drink camel urine? I don't think so. I think he ordered you to drink it, but he wouldn't drink it. <laughs> uh, 
drinking camel urine. And the funny, they they lift up the tail of the camel and they grab his penis and they force him to piss in their mouth because it should be fresh. Look at this guy. Do you see how he's holding his penis from the back? Do you, do you see it in the video? I, I don't want to play the video because, you know, they might claim copyright. No, I can't play it. I mean, and it's disgusting anyway. Camel urine. So, I don't know, like, I mean, this religion make everything upside down. The whole world is not secure. We have a problem with security because of Islam. Muslims themselves, they have security problems. You know. Islamic countries are the last one. If you go to any Muslim country, the first thing you will see, all the windows have bars. That because it's very secure country, right? No, it's the opposite. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to share with you this, and uh, I will try to make my broadcast in, like, uh, let us say, we usually we do it always like 3.30 p.m., my time, right? So, but we will try to move it around so we can get more people from different time zones, like Indonesia, to be with us, uh, like uh, uh, in Asia, those who want to be with us, at that time, is going to be for them, I think, 3.30 a.m. in the morning, which is, like, very harsh. So we will try to make it like now, etc. A different timing, so we can get more people to be, uh, to be with us, to be to be fair with everybody. And I know I love everybody really, and I, I appreciate all of you. Uh, many of you when I talk to me in Skype, I apologize. My Skype it became crazy. I open my Skype, I find like one thousand hello, a two thousand we hate you. <laughs> so I have to give up Skype the same as give up. I give up. Uh, I used to receive messages in, in Facebook. I give up because it, it's too much. It's impossible, you know. So now, if we have, you know, I was thinking about how we can still talk to Muslims. Uh, at least I don't want to call it a debate. Let us call it, you know, nice spanking. So how we can do that? Okay, a Muslim. If if we find a Muslim, he want to talk to me. We can open Pal Talk. It take him two minutes to download it. One second to text me. I approve the text. I call him. We talk, all right? So if you get somebody, for, you know, he think he can speak to me, I'm not going to call it a debate because there is no Muslim can debate me. I am not exaggerating. Read my history. No Muslim can debate me, not even Muhammad, not even Allah. And by the way, I never debated the Muslims. You, you see, it took, in order to call a debate a debate, you have to bring two decent people giving their opinion. When you speak to a Muslim, he don't give a decent answer. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I will give an example. Many of you watch the what it's called debate between Mimi Hijab and David Wood. Hijab was lying about all the answers. So how we can have debate? You know what I mean? That's not a debate, it's a game. What he said to him, your God, Allah, have uh, have hands, he have foot, he have parts. He said, who says so? But every Muslim knows that, that Allah have hands, have a foot. So how we can debate? He said to him, Allah, he pray, he pray. He said to him, he said, Allah, he pray for, not two. I mean, what is the answer? What is the answer? So they don't debate. They try to play you. They try to avoid answering. So if I want to call me speaking to a Muslim, I don't debate him. I corner him. It's like a chase. You know what I mean? It's a game. It's a game where you are going uh, like, I don't know, how, to, but uh, many of you watch how, how we spoke. You can watch my videos. It's a chase between somebody He's hiding under the table and somebody trying to get him out. 
It's not, it's not a debate. A person who want to say to me what his, his religion is about. No. Like you said to him, the Quran says, beat your wife. He starts playing all the games to say no. It doesn't say that. Really, you can find a Muslim who is honest and he say, yes, Islam says this. What's the problem? The only one you can find them saying things as it is, is ISIS, Al-Qaeda. They are a lot better in the mean of hypocrisy from the rest. They are not ashamed of their religion. They say, this is our religion. Your prophet, he killed the women, cut her to pieces. He said, yes. So? The Muslims always was like this until they became weak. If the Muslims are supremacists again and they control the earth, they will not discuss with you Islam is good or not. They will force you to accept Islam. So today we are not debating. We are fighting deception. And there's a huge difference. So I appreciate all those people who help us to fight deception. Please don't forget to download my videos. I don't keep them for long. And uh, for those who like to read, uh, in case you do not know, my books is translated to many languages, including German, Spanish, uh, French, Dutch, Swedish, um, you know, you name it. And actually now they are working in other languages too. So I hope soon we will have more. So people, they can read and they can educate themselves. Education is very important. Stupidity, ignorance is our enemy. Muslims are people who need help. I don't hate them. I'm trying to educate them. The same as I'm trying to educate you. And by the way, education is not a shame. Maybe any, any of you can correct me about a word in English. Simply, that is education. So I can be ignorant in the English. And you can be ignorant in something else. But it's not right to be ignorant about something very important and can destroy your life. Knowing or not knowing a word in English will not change really too much of my life. But being fool about what to follow, what not to follow, what is right, what's wrong, can destroy you, your life. Life, all of it is about decisions. If we make the wrong decisions, we go to the wrong place. And religion can affect your life big time. You are what you believe. Some people, they say you are what you eat, right? That is a different story. You are what you believe. If you believe, as, as an example, if somebody believes he's a girl, yet he's a man, he will walk like a girl, and he will talk like a girl. Do you agree with me? If a woman agree, or say, let's say, a woman, she believe that she's a man, she will talk like a man, and she will act like a man. She is what she believe. So, Believe is very important, can change our life, can change the way we do things, for bad or good, you are what you believe. And I'm here to help you, my friend. To make decision about what to believe. What you believe is your business, not my business. My business is to speak to you and share my knowledge and you make a decision. God is not a pimp who provides women and vaginas for sex in heaven. That is a wrong belief, which is very dangerous. People are dying because of this belief. People want to die. They commit suicide bombing just to get the vagina in heaven. This is how evil belief can be. Believing in killing a human being so I can go to heaven. So this is very serious matter. And we have to think about it very seriously too. If you like to read, 
feel free to search my books in Amazon, all kind of Amazon, AmazonIndia.com, France, Germany. And I hope my books will help you to have more reference and to guide you to the truth. And the best thing to read always is the Bible. And trust me, a Christian who don't read the Bible is missing, missing a lot, is missing his Christianity. He's missing the wisdom. So don't spend your much time with me looking at this garbage, but yet you don't have time to read two verses in the Bible. Here I have a mission so people will not be misled and misguided, but that should not be a reason for you not to concentrate and study the Bible, my friend. For me, I concentrate in this because this is a, this is something I can do, and maybe maybe few people can do it. Somebody have to clean the garbage, and what I work in is garbage. All of this is garbage. But what you can do, somebody have to clean the garbage, and that is me. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you, and I leave you with the peace of Christ. He gave us his peace, and he promised us what nobody promised. Amazing, beautiful wisdom, and the peace of heart, not women and sex in heaven. Be holy like your Father. I will be with you. Every two mention my name, I will be between. The Lord right now, he is with us. And his beauty is beyond the promises of a river of wine and milk and silly bracelet in my hand and a couch and a green silk and a skirt and a woman she is naked next to me. That is the devil who tried to seduce you from your belly and down. God is holy. The one who can make us happy by a smile, he can give us happiness a lot higher than what Muhammad, he promised us. Happy of a private part is not a happiness. That is not true. Even that was a gift from God so we can have a family and we can reproduce children. It wasn't about sex. God did not create us to be sex toys. And this is not the purpose of life. Think always about who you are and what you want to be. You want to be a sex toy, addicted to sex as Muhammad wanted you to be? Or you want to be holy as your father? He and she, they will not get married. They will be the same as angels, which means we will be free, free from our needs with the Lord, the Messiah. Thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you all. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon again. Take care.